This is tutorial 26 and Blender part 12. I went ahead and smoothed this out. You don't have to watch me do all that. It's pretty much brain dead work. Basically what you want to make sure of is that these lines are as smooth as possible. Every one of these lines, the contour needs to be nice and smooth and around all axes. When you look at it from the front, you need to make sure that the rings are concentric in a very clean way. And sometimes these normals, they really help you to correct errors that are, for example, where you notice there's a obviously a normal that's not parallel to the rest of them, then you know that there's sort of a kink somewhere in the, in the plane there. It's kind of like sculpting in that sense. You can learn all the right techniques, but in the end it takes practice to get it right. So I also added some resolution here in the nose to get, uh, get the nose shape a little bit more accurate. I met somebody online that was kind enough to uh, take a photograph of a poster that's used for training purposes for the Embraer pilots and now I'm able to model sort of the uh, panel according to that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start modeling this panel here. And notice whenever I have a high resolution image loaded up in the background, the reaction of Blender becomes a lot more sluggish. So I'm just going to use it as long as I need it and then I'm going to go ahead and deactivate it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a plane and yank it off to one side because I want to mirror it. And making sure that I'm in cursor uh, mode I'm going to resize it to approximately the thickness or anything that I can work with is fine for now. I align the top edge with that. Align the bottom edge with that. I'm going to tab out of edit mode. Make sure I have the editing button enabled here. And then I'm going to add that mirror modifier like this. So again, whatever I do to this side will also happen on that side. I'm going to keep modeling this. And now I'm going to get to an interesting curve here. And there are several ways we can deal with it. I personally want to show you this fun way of dealing with it. I place my cursor approximately at the radius of this curve, and instead of extruding again and rotating it around this axis, I'm going to actually introduce you to spin. You can see here I already used the parameters from my trial and error session earlier on. What I found was that this angle here is about 25 degrees, so what I want to do is I want to spin it using four steps up to minus 25 degrees, and this is the result of that. The radius is a bit too big, so maybe I'm going to have to place the cursor a little more pretty close to the, that vertex and try that again. Yeah, that's more workable. And then I can take this and actually expand it along the x-axis because this area is a little bit rounded as well. And I'm stretch it out, reposition the cursor right here, rotate it around a little bit, and resize it a little bit. And I have to sort of tweak this one up here a little bit as well. I think I can simply do that by pulling them together a little more, making that radius a little bit smaller pulling it over a little bit. And now I can extrude it to go along the straight edge here. And I'm just going to line up this vertex to that edge, that corner. And I'm going to extrude only that vertex, constrain it to the x-axis. And then I'm going to create a triangle out of this. This panel actually, and you don't see it from the background image, but it has sort of a ledge that hangs over. So I'm going to select the top layer of vertices, switch to side view, extrude them, and extrude them upwards. Again, I'm using control to snap these uh, extrusions. And what I've just created is a little bit of a ledge there. And here I need to do some cleanup because I don't need this vertex here, and I don't need this vertex here. And I can close this off and go like this. And then I can go like this. For now, I'm going to leave it in this vertical mode, sort of in the non-tilted mode. And I'm going to roughly position it here, keeping in mind that this is probably more like it's what it's going to look like. So we can try to do the next segment here, this main panel object, by using pretty much the same technique we did last time. Move this over to the side because we're going to mirror it. Gonna add the mirror modifier. When you get to these kinds of corners that you have to take, like this one for example, there's several different techniques you can try. What I'm personally going to do is I'm going to do a loop cut on this. And again, once I've done the first cut, I can pull this down and line it up to exactly where I want it. And then I can just ex make the extrusion on this edge here for the next segment of this panel. And here's another one of those situations where I think we would be best off creating a radius-based extrusion but we need a pivot point here. 
And it's not enough to just put the cursor here and then expect to make a good extrusion with the spin function because what we're going to get is this. So what I have to do is I actually have to split this thing here along that, that rotation. Just let me look at this. I can live with this. I mean, this is pretty much the angle I want. So I'm going to undo that and I'm going to pull up my cut menu again and I'm going to say knife exact and I'm going to cut this thing right there. Now I can extrude only this part and do the spin duplication on it. Oh, and because of that spin duplication, there's a whole bunch of duplicates sitting right here on this vertex. I'm going to merge them all at the cursor. So it removed four vertices for me. So now that I've removed those excess vertices, I'm going to continue my extrusion process here. And it's sort of handy that there's this vertex that's left over from that bit. So I'm just going to pull it down here, pull this one down here. The goal here is always to have as much precision as possible with the least amount of vertices as possible because keep in mind the more vertices you use the more likely you are to bog down the simulator as soon as you import it into the sim. I'm going to use the same extrusion spin technique here again but I think I have to increase this angle to like 40 degrees and then again I have to select all these and merge them at the cursor and then I continue my extrusion process here. Switching between the uh, cursor pivot point mode and the median pivot point mode is as easy as pressing the comma or the period button. Just do the SX0 thing and uh, align it to that background image. I'm going to pull this vertex down here, constraining it to the z-axis. I'm going to pull this vertex down, constraining it to the z-axis. Then if I zoom in a little bit, and create that little curvature that we wanted. So now we have that panel too. And that panel is, of course, a little bit inward. And we have to sort of make also a bottom ledge for this. And the way I'm going to do that is simply select the bottom row of vertices here and do a quick... I have to deselect that because otherwise that's going to extrude as well. I'll do a quick extrusion and side view just to get the overhanging ledge to be solid and not just a hole. So we push that panel in a little bit, and approximately this is what we're going for. So if I hit the 5 key, I can see that these are the beginnings of my 3D cockpit. And now keep in mind, this cockpit object here, what we have so far, this is the exterior of the plane. We need interior walls for the cockpit, along which we can put all the roof panels and the seats and all those kinds of things. So I select these edge loops, and I separate them from this object using the P command. And now I have these uh, windows again, just the way we started. And I'm going to move this over to a different la layer again. And now what I can do with these is extrude them like this. And I can extrude these edges to meet up in the middle. And again, I'm going to use the cursor to selection technique here and uh, hit the period button to extrude them a little bit. And then SX0 again, that way they meet in the middle. Select the interior of this ledge and go to top view and move it forward a little bit and inward a little bit more and then I go ahead and skin this part as well and now I'm going to just tweak the radius here so that we have a nice and smooth radius on top and this is going to become the ceiling panel that we're going to work on a little bit later on select all these vertices here along the edge and go to side view put the cursor there extrude them and rotate them along the cursor and resize them SY0 and then I'm going to resize them along the vertical axis. Now just let me pull up the exterior again to, to get a reference. Okay, I can go a little higher and you see now how the ledge lines up exactly with the exterior of the plane. So now I think I'm going to rotate this uh, thing around just for the time being but I have to remember how many degrees I'm rotating it by. So keep your eye on the bottom of the screen there and I think I'm going to rotate it by around 18 degrees. And then I'm going to go to the top view, and I have to move these towards the inside a little bit more like this. And I'm going to pull this over to be a little more aligned with the rest of the panel like this. So this is pretty much the panel we have so far. Let's see what it looks like with the nose of the plane. Uh, okay, so this is these are the beginnings of the uh, of the 3D cockpit. And yes, there's still a lot more to tweak on this. But uh, there you go. In the next tutorial, we'll continue building the uh, 3D cockpit, and let's see how far we get with that. Thanks again for watching.